Good evening, sisters and brothers, and thank you for this opportunity as a Marxist and a Christian and ordained minister, by the way, to make a presentation on fascism in our country. What I have to share with you is an extension of a Marxist class offered last September on the dangers of fascism, but this one is with a specific focus on nationalism among white evangelicals, as well as a brief analysis of the game-changing fascist putsch at the Capitol a month ago. The opiate of the masses has become toxic and it'll take a massive united front against Christian fascism to defeat it. And I'd like to make very clear at the outset that Christian fascism is an oxymoron. One cannot be a fascist and a true Christian at the same time, as I'm sure the presentation here will indicate. Christianity, uh, like uh, Islam with Al-Qaeda, has been hijacked, and the goal of the hijackers, and they're very numerous, and they're pretty potent in our country, is uh, to create a fascist theocracy. You've had Christianity hijacked by raci racists, white nationalist supremacists, we all know about the KKK, but they are now operative in the form of the Christian identity, identity Europa, American identity, Christian patriots, creative movement, Phineas priesthood, and Phineas comes from uh, an Israeli high priest, I Israelite high priest who uh, killed a mixed religion uh, couple. Patriot Front, Patriot Front, the base, the Council of Conservative Citizens, American Renaissance, V Dare, uh, named after allegedly the first uh, white uh, baby born in North America, National Policy Institute, and so on. Left unchecked racism will invariably culminate into fascism. So fighting racism is part of the fight against fascism. You also have fascists in right wing evangelical. Uh, organizations and arch conservative Catholics, uh, Capital Ministries, uh, which has been operating in the White House for the past four years, Opus Dei, you had uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Scalia as part of that, uh, People of Praise uh, is a charismatic Catholic movement, and the newest uh, Supreme Court Justice, Amy uh, Comer Bennett, is part of that. And both People of Praise and Opus Dei have their origins in fascist Spain. Army of God, Dominionists, Christian militia, militias, Turning Point USA. Turning Point USA organized 80 buses to the January 6th uh, uh, insurrection. And it's important to uh, know this term, accelerationists. Uh, the uh, racist, uh, white supremacist, armed thugs are not strong enough to create fascism in our country. What they want to do is accelerate or stimulate a race war. And on the other hand, you have end time ideologues, and I'll talk more about that later, that yearn for the apocalypse and world war. Uh, examples of uh, the groups are Proud Boys, Three Percenters, Oath Keepers, uh, Joshua March, March Christians United for Israel, and a whole host of TV evangelists. Now it's also hijacked by evangelicals. Uh, this is a specific form of Christianity. Most Christians are not evangelicals. These are the uh, so-called born again Christians. And this is the only segment of US Christianity, which is growing. It's gone from 51% in 2009 to 59% in 2019 and all other forms of Christianity and Catholicism are decreasing. However, the nuns, uh, ones that are not affiliated with any religion, uh, have risen from 17% to 26%. So one of the challenges is that the Christian right is growing, but mainstream Christianity and the Christian left is shrinking. And uh, again, though not originally connected to fascism, evangelicals now over overwhelmingly are. The uh, KKK has been called uh, a, a invisible empire. Well, we have a more visible one with us now uh, that is rooted in so-called Christianity. Here's what I call cells. 
the hundreds of mega churches, and there are actually over a thousand mega churches that attract thousands of worshipers every Sunday, uh, such as the Lakewood Church that's in Houston, has 43,000 weekly attendees run by Joel Osteen, who's worth $100 million, and other key churches are things like North Point Community Church in Georgia, Life Church in California, Gateway Church, uh, Willow Creek Community Church in Illinois, Crossroads Church, uh, Preston Baptist Church, uh, which also received $50,000 from Ivanka Trump. And notable is the Southeast Christian Church, which uh, is the largest church in Kentucky. And among its members, you have Mitch McConnell and his wife. In addition, there are thousands of smaller churches within right-wing evangelical base uh, recently coming out are so-called patriot churches. And there are scores of evangelical universities, Liberty University being the key, uh, Oral Roberts University, Regent University, Bob Jones, and so on. They have a vast propaganda machine. I'm not going to go over all of this. Uh, you can read it because I want to uh, spend some time on the other things. The Christian Broadcasting Network, uh, founded by Pat Robertson, uh, is a very influential uh, part of the propaganda machine. So is the Trinity Broadcasting Network founded more recently, and it operates 24-7 uh, to over 5 million viewers and has assets of over $800 million. All of that uh, is, tax, dedu is uh, tax deductible. You also have the Salem Media Group, 99 radio stations, 11 million listeners, and part of that is the Regnery Publishing Cup Corporation, and they have agreed to publish uh, Josh Hawley's uh, uh, vicious book after Simon & Schuster uh, rejected it. That's the senator. Uh, and then you have RSB Network that videographs all the rallies, you know, Moody Radio and Publishing. And then you have a whole host of TV evangelists and a large number of evangelical organizations. So you're dealing with a very formidable, organized, group of propagandists that are spewing out their hate to millions of Americans every week. Where do they get their money from? Well, there is an annual conclave of hard right wing evangelical philanthropists that has been meeting every year since 1985. It's called The Gathering. They have raised over $12 billion since uh, that time. Admission to the April 2017 gathering was $1,700, and it is attended by representatives of billionaire evangelist families, DeVos, Coors, Prince, Green, McLean, Amazon, Breeze, etc. Then there is the National Christian Foundation, which dispersed uh, over $12 billion dollars to 63,000 evangelical churches since 1982. It attracts about $1.5 billion in donations every year. The donor identity is kept mostly anonymous. There are some 25,000 donations that come in the form of cash, real estate, stocks, largest. It's the largest source of funds for anti-abortion, anti- LGBT organizations over the last 15 years. In 2018, over 556 million was given by the NCF to various hate groups and top, top corporate funders uh, were Hobby Lobby, followed by Chick-fil-A. You have a large number of evangelical family foundations, such as the Dick and Betsy Voss, DeVos Family Foundation. Uh, her parents, the Edgar and Elsa Prince Foundation, the McLean Foundation, the Bolthouse Foundation, the Freeze Family Foundation, the JSC Foundation from the Coors family, the APF Foundation from the Piper family, the Amazon Foundation, the Christian Community Foundation, Barnabas Foundation, Windshape Foundation, that's from the Kathy family from, uh, uh, Phil, uh, from uh, Chicka Flick, and the Samaritan Purse 
uh, from the Franklin Graham family. This uh, is a formidable and very wealthy funding source for right-wing uh, Christian uh, fascism. You have corporate funders. David Green of Hobby Lobby is the main one. S. Truett Cathy of Chick-fil-A is one. Richard Uline of the uh, Schlitz uh, uh, Beer Company Air is one. Jeffrey Yass, uh, and then Mike Medell, who's much in the news, uh, the CEO of MyPillow. Let me point out that these are all evangelical Christian funders and organizations. Their purpose is to fund the path towards a fascist theocracy. Then you also have the Donors Trust, which is a key funding arm of climate science, denial. It was given over $7 million by the Cox, and it's headed by a Christian evangelical, Lawson Bader, and who's also a member of the Evangelical Council for National Policy that was praised by Pence. Uh, Donor Trust gave over $3 million to Freedom Works. The DeVos Family Foundation gave six hundred grand to Freedom Works, and Freedom Works was active in the Stop the Steal protests in 2020 and on January 6th. In addition, you have millions of evangelicals donating at least one-tenth of their uh, income to right-wing churches. Let me point out some of the key features of the ideology that is motivating this movement. It's important to become familiar with the so-called end times because one of the themes of all of these groups is the expectance of the second coming of Christ. Unfortunately, according to their deranged version, this requires world war, the ultimate battle of Armageddon, the great final battle that starts with a fully restored Israel versus Muslim and other pagan nations and the left behinders, which will be the overwhelming majority of humanity, along with their antichrist, gets exterminated as a result. So it's actually a genocidal philosophy. Measuring this so-called rapture, the second coming, is a thing called the rapture index, the gauge of end times. And according to the most recent uh, version, it is now very high, increased by a rise in plagues, uh, such as the pandemic, by liberalism, the left's, as they say it, fanatical in opposition to Trump, by the win by the Democrats, uh, moving Jerusalem, uh, moving uh, Israel's capital to Jerusalem, all indicate that, in their view, the Armageddon battle is very close. And this is, according to them, the most terrifying and destructive of all wars mankind will experience. All forces of good and evil will be fighting for power. Jesus wins. This is what they fully expect. In fact, some expect that to happen in 2021. There's a uh, essay called Battlefield 2021 by the evangelist Terry James of Rapture Ready, who says that Christ will call his people, the church, to himself in rapture very soon. And the spirit of the Antichrist is manifested in the Black Lives Matter movement calls to defund the police as well as the Biden victory allegedly through a stolen election. These recent events are all signs in the minds of the Christian fascists that Armageddon is close. Some of the themes are vehemently pro-life, anti-abortion, pro-gun, anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim, anti-LGB, anti-feminist, pro-right to work, pro-Trump, nationalists, and white supremacists. That's some of the theory, the ideology. What's their practice? Well, they've been holding massive rallies of late, one that took place that didn't get much attention, but you can see it uh, uh, on the internet by uh, clicking thereturn.org. There was a Unite the Christian Right, which was formerly called the Return National Day of Repentance, for the sins of abortion, of socialism, which was held on September the 26th last year. It attracted over 75,000 evangelical to DC, to the DC mall. Millions more saw this via simulcast. 
and they listen to a wide barrage for hours of Christian fascists, all Trump supporters, and the keynote speaker was end time prophet Jonathan Kahn, who declared that the last days are close and darkness must come. Other speakers condemned communism, socialism, liberalism, and abortion, and they are quoted as saying, you speaking to the audience are the last dyke holding back the uh, tyranny uh, proclaimed one anti-communist speaker and another prayed for the end of brutal socialism and communist persecution in China. So you get the picture. You're familiar, I'm sure, with the Save America rally on January the 6th. That included a very large contingent of evangelical Christian flags, signs saying Jesus saves, Jesus is my savior, Trump is my president, Jesus 2020 banners, and crosses. This was preceded on January the 5th, and this didn't get as much attention, by a variety of rallies organized by evangelicals themselves, such as Prayer to Save America, Rally to Revival, One Nation Under God, Save the Republic Rally. In addition to inciting violence, Trump declared on January the 6th, quote, this is not the end, but only the beginning of our movement. We should take that very serious. There's also at the state level, a uh, legislative effort to introduce uh, very conservative reactionary bills called Project Blitz. It uh, arms state legislators with model bills that attack reproductive rights, public education, equality. In 2018, uh, 300 such bills were introduced in 32 states. 33 of them passed in 16. Many, many more are expected this year. And then you also have rallies at state capitals. These were not explicitly run by the evangelicals, uh, of uh, but uh, the armed protesters at several state capitals, most notably Michigan and Oregon, invaded the interior of the building. They had a plan to kidnap Michigan Governor Whitmer, and it seems as if they were trial runs for the January 6th assault. Now, this is important. The domestic terrorist mob that invaded the Capitol building. And then in a few hours, the 148 congressional members who voted to overturn the Biden victory, and I call them the Insurrection Caucus, are two heads of the same beast. They are the same force, only in different organizational guard. And I think that's important to keep in mind. And if you take a look at the Insurrection Caucus, who these 148 congressional members were, you will find, to no one's surprise, I guess, that 60 of the 138 House reps who voted to overturn the November election were ev are evangelical Christians. That includes uh, Kevin McCarthy, who's a Southern Baptist, Barry Loudermilk, also a Southern Baptist, who compares Trump to Christ, Marjorie Green, who uh, says she has a strong Christian faith. Uh, these evangelicals were joined by 30 pro-life Catholic representatives. And at the Senate, six US senators objected to the electoral votes in Arizona, seven objected to the PA votes. And that includes Tommy Tuberville, a restorationist, Church of Christ uh, member, Ted Cruz, a Southern Baptist, and Josh Hawley, who is with the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, which was formed as a reaction to liberalism of the PC USA. That's the Presbyterian Church uh, USA. It's very important to recognize that the evangelical movement has a extremely strong presence in the US Congress. So even though uh, Trump may be gone, many of his worshipers are still very much there. Also, you have donors. Where do, where do these uh, evangelicals in Congress get most of their money from? If you do an analysis of the top campaign donors to the Insur Insurrection Caucus, they are 
white Christian evangelicals like the billionaire Karen Wright, a CEO of Ariel Corporation, oil and gas industry, Ronald Cameroon of Monterre Farms, and also the founder of the Jesus Fund, Barbara Gabby, uh, an heir to the Amway Hotel Corporation riches, Michael Hyde, the CEO of Western National Group, and Kelsey Warren, the CEO of Energy Transfer Products. Now, billionaires donate to politicians outside of this insurrection caucus, but these are all evangelical white billionaires that have donated very heavily to uh, the members of the caucus. Now, if you look at the mob itself, there was a analysis done of uh, about 200 of those that were arrested out of the 800 that participated. And you found that most of them were middle class. They were business owners or they held white collar jobs. They were middle aged, average age of 40. The majority had no connection to far right militias. Only one tenth were connected to the militias, but 21 had military training and experience and six were actively serving cops. 50% came from states that Biden won. Okay, so this fascist putsch really reveals the extent and the power of um, the uh, Christian fascist movement. The remainder of much of what I have to say is a little bit more theoretical, and I don't know if uh, we have the time to get into that. I just want to uh, reiterate that these uh, beliefs of white evangelical Protestants uh, were uh, analyzed by the Pew Research Fund, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, some of the more important ones are the two at the bottom. One third of all Republicans are white evangelicals, and two thirds of Republicans think Biden did not legitimately win the election. Now that's important. I'll come back to that because that lie is going to be very influential in growing the fascist movement in the future. The appeal of their message, and I don't want to deal a lot on this, it's a very simple message that uh, the uh, right-wing evangelical has. Uh, there's no critical thinking required or desired. It's groupthink, and it's all centered on a personal relationship to Jesus. Basically, all you do is believe in Jesus, all your sins are forgiven, you're going to heaven, and everybody else is going to hell. So you have a simplistic uh, ideology that provides for self-esteem of elevation and a sense of empowerment through weaponized prayer and speaking in tongues. Now, uh, I also don't want to spend a lot of time because it's almost 7.30 already. There is a very important book uh, that was written over 50 years ago called The Authoritarian Personality, trying to figure out why uh, so many Germans fell to fascism during uh, the Third Reich. And there was a scale that the researchers developed called the fascism scale. And there are about 40 questions asked. And on the basis of these questions, you have these characteristics coming out from the authoritarian syndrome. And those include conventionalism, submission, aggression, anti-interception, superstition, which is especially relevant given the prevalence of the Q a non-conspiracy, obsession with power, destructiveness, cynicism, projectivity, and insecurity and anxiety. And uh, it's uh, believed also that the pandemic has increased the level of fear, anxiety, and insecurity, and also increased the loss of status and privilege, and that makes millions vulnerable to this ideology. Uh, I just want to skip down. In, uh, okay, but one, one thing. There's an important uh, sociological premise that says if people define a situation as real, it's real in its consequences. In other words, false beliefs have real consequences. People and nations are treated as they are defined. And in this case, the I thou relation see, seeing the divine or the good in others is replaced by an I it or a we versus they, we the angelic 
versus they, the demonic definition in the uh, right-wing evangelical mindset. For instance, uh, very recently, Vice President Harris has been rather consistently labeled Jezebel by so Southern Baptist uh, leaders. Uh, and the end time uh, prophecy is really a theology of war and genocide, the antithesis of true Christianity. The big lie of a stolen election. Let me dwell on this for a minute because this is important. This is still believed by many, many of the 73 to 75 million who voted for Trump. And it uh, reminds of the danger of the stab in the back lie regarding World War I, which was propagated by fascists in the Weimar Republic, which helped pave the way to the Third Reich. The idea of stab in the back is that Germany never lost World War I, but it was because of treason and deceit and corruption in high places that they had to surrender. And that then paved the way for the Third Reich in Germany. The stolen election, stop the steal belief, has every potential of playing the same role in America. Estimated 68% of Republicans believe the election was stolen and stop the steal signs are still widely displayed. I have one right here in my neighborhood, even now. So I would argue that Christian fascism is a specific expression of false consciousness, an opiate of the masses imposed upon the working class by the extreme right of the ruling class. And if we are ever in our country to get from a class in itself to a class for itself, it will require in part overcoming the false consciousness of Christian fascism. So what's to be done? Well, I call for a antithesis of the trinity of education, organization, and agitation. As I said, we need to replace Christian fascism, which is an oxymoron, with Christian socialism, which is not an oxymoron. We need to replace the fallacies of the prosperity gospel and the Christian right with the truth of the social gospel, liberation theology, creation spirituality, and let's not walk on eggshells when talking about evangelical nationalists. They are Christian fascists or fascists posing as Christian. Organizational efforts we need to do is help build and expand the Christian left, especially things like the Poor People's Campaign, a national campaign for a moral reviver led by the Reverend Barber. We need to expand and strengthen a united front against fascism. When it comes to specific agitation, there's a whole host of things that need to be done. Uh, we need to, of course, defend and expand uh, the right of abortion. We need to uh, defend and expand uh, Palestinian rights. Uh, in order to avoid a nuclear catastrophe, we need to have the U.S. ratify the recently promulgated U.N. Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, promote the BDS movement, and I say start calling for a tax on the churches, not allowing them to be tax-free. Expose the donors to the uh, National Christian Foundation and expose and resist all project to blitz bills. Let me conclude what I uh, like to say here with a quote from two of my favorite people. The one is from Bertolt Brecht, who in 1941, 80 years ago, wrote a play called The Resistible Rise of Arturo Ui. It's an anti-fascist drama of a failed rise to power by a Chicago gangster representative of Hitler. And at the very end, the actor turns to the audience and says very sincerely, do not let your guard down. The womb from which this barbarism crawled is fertile still. And then from Dr. W. E. B. Du Bois, written back in 1906, either the United States will destroy ignorance or ignorance will destroy the United States. I think he had our times in mind as well.
thank you. That's my presentation. I'd be happy to respond to any questions that anyone has. Okay, thank you, Dr. Scholl. Uh, we will now uh, open the floor for questions and comments. Uh, please uh, state uh, audibly. Uh, we will not be able to read uh, your questions and comments, so I'm looking for raised hands. If you would like to make a comment or introduce a question, just click the picture of the hand on your control panel and I will be able to see and I will be able to call on you. Okay, Michael Madden, your mic is open on our end. Put your mouse cursor over the mic and click. Yes, thank you, Dean. Well, this is an extraordinary presentation that you've gathered together. And I tried to share today uh, something from the Minneapolis Star Tribune about what's playing out here in Minnesota. So two questions, Dr. Scholl. First is, recently on public television, there was an expose of the family, which essentially is um, all of these people, in other words, the, 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 the congressional breakfast that's been happening since you know, the late 70s. Well, these are all right-wing fundamental Christians. Uh, so just comment upon that. But the takeaway is uh, when asked and pointedly uh, challenged, they said, well, we believe that the Lord's will will be done, even it could be in the vessel of Donald Trump. Uh, number one and number two, when uh, I wonder if you could share with us your sense, Dr. Scholl, of um, the work of the Sojourners magazine and the Sojourners organization, which I think it's sort of a left, I'm not sure, but I'll let you tell us what it really is. Sojourners magazine as part of a force in opposition and dealing with something that at least I remember in 1965 seeing, you know, the beginning receiving literature. Um, anyway, thank you very much, Dee and Dr. Scholl, and we'll uh, wait for further uh, deliberations here. Thank you, Dee. Thank you. All right, Michael. Your mic is open on our end. Put your mouse cursor, Michael Win Winiger. Yes, Winiger. Michael Winiger. Thank you, Dee. Uh, can, can you hear me okay? Yes, very well. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Scholl, for such a, uh, a uh, well-organized and thorough presentation, especially for the amount of time that you had. But uh, except, I think you left out... Uh, EWTN, the Eternal World Television Network, when you were mentioning the various media conglomerates, and my understanding that's the main that's the main Roman Catholic media organization in the United States and in the world, and it's always been conservative, but here in recent years during the rise of Trump, it's become very right wing, very pro Trump, very anti Pope Francis, and I don't know if you follow uh, that organization at all. But uh, as a Roman Catholic, I refuse to watch it now for a very long time because of its right-wing slant. I mean, it's gone. It used to be more of a neo-orthodox theolo theological organization, which kind of corresponds in the secular world to ne uh, neoconservatism. But it's gone all the way, I think, to the far right now. And um, I want to know if you have anything to say about uh, uh, that organization, especially Raymond Oyo, who's their main journalist there, who goes on an anti-Francis rant rant almost every every time you take some microphone so but anyway uh, that's my comment and thank you very much for your presentation thank you mm -hmm. thank you all right let's take a few more molly your mic is open on our end open your mic on your there you are hi dr Joel. Um, my name is molly and i'm in cleveland ohio um i was really excited for this presentation this is this is really relevant um for folks in places like ohio um and i have to say that like i did not expect to be triggered as much as i am right now um and so i wanted to uh give a little bit of feedback like um <laughs> about like your presentation like style um because you know, I think, you know, the 
Christian fascists are extremely um, powerful and violent and um, directly oppose a lot of the people who, you know, are on this call. And so I think like maybe having some type of trigger warning in the front of the presentation, like if you are a woman, if you are Jewish, if you are, you know, a uh, communist, like on this call, like just so you know, like this might be triggering. Um, and then also when it comes to this slide you have here, like the organizations that are opposing um, the Christian fascists, the Christian left, um, the Poor People's Campaign. If 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 you could have like a, a some kind of in depth as to like their level of power, so that like you know we can see like that there is a, a some organization, some organized opposition. Um, like I just feel like it would it it just would make the, make this well rounded and like more digestible. Um, just. And one request right now, if you could scroll back, I think it was like the third slide where you went through like the amount of wealth that they have, like the foundations and all of the media conglomerates. I think it was like third, like the third slide or something. Like this was completely new information for me. This looks like trillions of dollars. I mean, I'm just like, I'm really shocked. So if there could be some detail as to like, what does the Christian left have? <laughs> Cause I hope it's something similar. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll take a couple more. Natalie, your mic is open. Hi, I'm Natalie, I'm 15 years old. So I'm fairly new to communism as a whole, but I'm definitely here to learn more. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, like, how do you think that like the history of sort of the Red Square or contributes to the perpetuation of these ideas and biases towards the far left? And I was also wondering if you had any theory recommendations. About what? The history of, the history of what? The Red Scare and sort oh. of just like biases towards communism as a whole. Did you get that, Dr. Dr. Show? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Natalie. One more. Just a moment. Russell, your mic is open. Open your mic on your end. Put your cursor, your mouse cursor over the picture of the mic. Click it. Okay, your mic is, open, is not open on your end. Put your mouse cursor over your over the picture of the mic on your control panel and click. Okay, your mic is still not open on your end. All right, so I'll move to someone else. The last person, Robert, your mic is, there you are, Robert. Yes, good evening, good evening, and thank you, Dr. Soul. Um, I'm 68 years old, Roman Catholic, and have been studying this stuff for since uh, Leonardo Boff wrote about liberation theology in Central America. I am totally aware of the fact that the vast majority, well, a good percentage of the hierarchy of North America is no big fan of Pope Francis. In Pope Francis's latest book, Let Us Dream, it is essentially an amazing book basically saying that the system has to change. Now, my dilemma is that how do we go about those of us who are on the, on the left, who, who are Christian, how do we go about having a dialogue when, when the radical right has such a massive amount of propaganda machine and the right and the left has such little i mean uh, it, it, if it's not reading a book i mean not many catholics even read national catholic reporter or commonwealth so my point is is that well, how do you see what do you suggest we get how do we get our message across and thank you very much for your wonderful presentation Thank you. Okay, one more, Dr. Scholl, and then we'll I'll turn it back over to you.
Gary, your mic is open. Gary Bono. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, can you hear, by the way? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, this is just, I wanted to point, to, I wanted a clarification of something. I, not sure if you said this explicitly, but I believe that you said that the majority, the, 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 the significant majority of the insurrectionists were evangelicals rather than members of militias and this kind of thing. And I just like, I want to think about that some more. So I'd like to know if that's correct, you know, explicitly. Okay, Dr. Scholl, you want to? Uh... Yes. Thank you uh, very much for all the insights and the questions and the kind comments. Uh, Mike uh, uh, from, I believe, uh, Minnesota uh, talked about the family and a uh, PBS broadcast about that and uh, the idea that uh, the uh, members think that uh, the Lord's will is being done uh, through Trump. I think you can go further than that uh, when it comes to the uh, evangelical movement. They basically see uh, Trump as the instrument of God at this time in order to bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth. In fact, uh, the capital ministry organizations, and there's in the article that I shared about uh, onward Christian soldiers, a focus uh, on the capital ministries. They've been openly operating on a weekly basis with Bible studies attended by Pence for the past four years in the White House. And uh, a foundational belief is that uh, Trump, as awful as he is, uh, is somehow uh, a instrument of uh, God. That's how much uh, they hate socialism, that they would go to fascism. You mentioned also uh, the Sojourners magazine. Uh, one of the articles shared uh, called uh, Sedition and Silence uh, is written by Jim Wallace, who uh, is the editor of Sojourners. And it's a very good one. And uh, Sojourners is an excellent magazine and most certainly does belong uh, to the Christian left and uh, should be uh, part of this. Uh, and it is part of the anti-Trump and anti-fascist uh, movement. Uh, my uh, focus was mostly upon the evangelical movement within Protestantism, so I didn't focus much upon the Catholics. That's why I didn't mention the EWTN network, which uh, is very potent. And you're absolutely right, Michael, that uh, under uh, the Trump uh, tyranny uh, and regime, uh, it, along with so much else, has decayed from middle ground or centrist into outright far-right propaganda, and especially around the pro-life uh, issue. Uh, that has become a uh, central part of the uh, evangelical and the Catholic movement, is that this is uh, now a very serious attempt to abolish uh, all forms uh, of abortion everywhere in the United States. That's part of the fascist theocracy. So we, we need to keep that in mind. Uh, Molly uh, from Cleveland, I wasn't completely sure uh, what you meant by a trigger warning. Uh, I'm sorry, I think we're all mature and we can take this information without uh, fearful of uh, its uh, possible unnerving uh, uh, impact. And uh, there is an awful lot of money. That's exactly the point that I was trying to make. In fact, doing research on this, uh, I was surprised to find out how much of it uh, there really is. There are hundreds of billions of dollars that are coming in from uh, billionaires uh, in the country or uh, associated with some of the groups that you see on the screen there that are being used to fund not only uh, national politicians, but state and local politicians. This, this is a monster uh, and it's well-funded. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think that we have, of course, the uh, potency of uh, the Christian left that is necessary to take it on uh, head on alone. That's why a united front is necessary. We need to have diversity in this united front, not just simply Christians, uh, but certainly uh, atheists uh, as well as uh, unionists 
uh, one of the things about the composition of the um, insurrection mob is that there were no labor organizations represented there. There were, there were no unions at, at all. Uh, and uh, Gary, just to clarify, yes, I do say that a good majority of uh, the participants, at least in the rally, maybe not all of the 800 that invaded, uh, but uh, at least of the rally, the thousands and thousands that were there were evangelical Christians. That was made very explicitly clear by the uh, signs that they were carrying. Uh, one especially popular was uh, Jesus, my savior, uh, Trump, my president, that uh, has caught on. And busloads of uh, evangelicals were brought in by right-wing organizations. Uh, I mentioned Turning Point USA that brought in 80 buses, uh, mostly composed of evangelicals. So uh, a good segment of the participants at that uh, Save America rally, but perhaps uh, not as many that invaded the Capitol were Christian evangelicals. And certainly their goal was echoed by the insurrection caucus in Congress. I really think that that point needs to be made uh, very clear that it's not just simply the uh, domestic terrorists that are a problem. Their goal was explicitly echoed by 168 members of Congress just a few hours after they trashed the Capitol. That's outrageous. In my view, all of them are guilty of sedition and should be removed. Uh, I thank you, Natalie, you know, with your 15 years of uh, uh, joining this group, and I encourage you very much to continue uh, your study of Marxism, communism, and you mentioned the Red Scare. Unfortunately, McCarthyism is still with us, in some ways and we need to be aware of that but it is not as potent as it was uh, decades ago uh, nobody's going to jail uh, for their beliefs uh, on the left uh, right now that may of course change and if uh, these fascists get their way uh, there'll be a lot more of us uh, in jail and uh, robert uh, you're absolutely right uh, about liberation theology and Leonardo Buff, I was pleased to hear you mention him, one of my favorites as well. And there is a big split, not only in the Protestant church, but the Catholic churches between right and left. It's echo it echoes the split within our country. I mean, we are more divided now than I've ever seen in my lifetime. That is uh, at the same time, a uh, opportunity for us uh, to organize on the left, uh, as well as a challenge. And uh, we uh, have at least uh, the power of, uh, the power of, uh, let's be clear, of the truth. Uh, the, the fascists operate on the big lie, whether they're Christian or otherwise. They have to have constant repetition of the big lie, like the steel, uh, the uh, Satan, uh, stop the steal. That has to be repeated, repeated over and over and over and over again to make it stick. In fact, if you remember all the lawsuits that were filed after the election uh, talking about uh, stop the steal, I think that the real function of that was not to overturn the election in the uh, court of law. I, I think they realized that was hopeless. But what it did is it made the big lie bigger. It made people really believe, because of its constant repetition, that there must be something uh, true to this. And there still are tens of millions of Americans that believe this big lie. So overcoming that with the truth is uh, part of the battle against uh, Christian fascism. So I think uh, that would be my comments uh, in reaction to those who made, uh, made comments or raised questions. Okay, so thank you. Let's take a few more. Um, we'll take a few more questions and comments. Tony, your mic is open. Tony Ryan, click your mic on your end. Tony Ryan, your mic is open. Click your mic on your end. Put your mouse cursor over picture of the mic on your control panel and click. There you are. Can you, hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, well, first, I just, I'm very pleased to have been able to participate 
and the good doctor gave some great information tonight. And um, I, um, I, I was just, I think it's really important that this kind of webinars happen. And it's really good that the education committee of our party has, has done this. Um, and we, and I know that that's part of, going to be part of a longer series of discussions. So I'm really happy about that. Um, a lot of things. Um, I was raised as a Catholic and I actually ended up leaving the church uh, largely because I was, uh, after my father died, I um, was sent to a, a Catholic school with my middle brother. I'm the eldest. And I ended up only lasting a semester and it was run by a bunch of right wing Hungarian priests and I was pretty rebellious at that point and I just basically left the church after that experience um and I want to go into detail but I I'm very impressed these days by I still follow what goes on within the church and I think it's the Catholic Church and I think it's well taken that there is class struggle within the, the Catholic Church and we need to recognize that um and that Pope Francis has played a very very important role in all of this and um he's scaring a lot of these people within the church um i appreciate the stuff about the protestant all of this money this is really important and i think it was great that you brought that forward doctor um i think that really it's really important to try to understand the role of liberation theology and um especially in latin america but not only latin america um, base communities, for example, in Nicaragua, or uh, the, the, the Martin to, Luther, the Martin Luther Luther, because we I'm, have other people. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. The Martin Luther uh, King. Please Center respect in Cuba. what I'm saying, Tony. I'm stopping. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, looking for raised hands scott your mic is open on our end there you are uh, thank, thank you d and and thank you dr Scholl. um i wanted to uh ask specifically about uh this proposal of, of taxing the churches it's it's one i've heard uh floated before um either uh taxing them or um have you know irs investigations to you know document the way they're misusing their tax exempt status um, in ways that are completely against the law. Is that something that uh, is gaining political traction? Is there a, is there a movement um, kind of around that? Are there other, other groups that are taking it up uh, formally? Um, that, that's my question. And I, I also wanted to kind of um, echo what, what Molly said. Uh, it hadn't occurred to me uh, the idea of a, of a trigger warning, but um, yeah, maybe some acknowledge this. This is some some terrifying stuff, um, and I think you did a good job uh, throughout the 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 presentation of you know emphasizing how serious this threat is. Um, so to maybe just to foreground that at the at the beginning. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much. Okay. Um... Just a moment. Okay, Emily, your mic is open. Click your mic on your end. There you are. Awesome. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Shaw for the very useful information he provided, especially for someone like me who's uh, atheist and grew up in a very secular country. These are genuinely new information and shocking information for me um i i i hope this question doesn't come as uh, offensive to you but what what do you think since you use it qu quite a lot and i would like to think how do you um when approaching the uh religious community that we're trying to you know unite how how to i i guess make peace with the common the opium of the masses with i i guess we have a lot of common grounds in value in terms of you know for uh, for the welfare of the people but how essentially 
do we, I guess, come to term with that essentially we're having to work with this opium of the masses, if that question is clear enough for you. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Okay, Dr. Scholl, you have the mic. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Tony, who uh, evidently is a recovering Catholic, I uh, understand uh, what you must have gone through. Uh, maybe this applies to uh, other comments as well. I think it's important not to throw out me with the bathwater. Uh, what I've gone over here is not only bathwater, but uh, poisonous bathwater that identifies itself as Christian. Uh, but there is a authentic uh, Christianity uh, within our country, and that has uh, motivated a number of powerful social movements. A uh, hundred years ago, the dominant form of theology and Protestantism was the social gospel, uh, which uh, was um, the precursor of uh, liberation theology then in, uh, in Latin America. And perhaps, uh, well, not just perhaps, we need to go back to those uh, uh, progressive foundations and expose the lie of uh, the uh, Christian uh, right. Uh, Emily, uh, you mentioned uh, the phrase opiate of the masses, and we're all uh, familiar with that. And my understanding as a Christian and a Marxist of that famous dictum by Karl Marx is that he meant false religion is the opiate of the masses. I think if you deal with his writing, especially that of Engels, then later on, you find out that uh, true religion, uh, the, true, true Christianity, uh, seeing uh, Jesus as a liberator, uh, not just the savior of souls, but a transformation uh, a vehicle of society to uh, transform institutions, not just save individuals. That real religion uh, is uh, the caffeine of the masses. It wakes them up. Uh, don't forget the social gospel played a very important role in the work and the life of Reverend uh, Martin Luther King. And it does so now in the, um, in, in the work of Reverend uh, William Barber. And uh, that movement, even though it's still small, is growing. And the good thing that it has going for it is that it doesn't rely upon lies. So you just simply have to tell it like it is, and some people will uh, get the message. Um, as far as taxing the church is, is concerned, Scott, uh, no, that's a pretty uh, uh, remote possibility. But I think it's important that we all realize that the mega churches uh, that are really a major base of right-wing uh, Christianity, that the mega churches are really businesses. They're not really churches. Uh, they are in the business of making money. And as such, at least they need to be taxed. I would uh, start uh, raising the possibility of taxing mega churches. There are a lot of other smaller ones that would disappear if they were ever taxed, but. I think uh, that's important. And uh, yes, Scott, and yes, uh, uh, Molly, uh, this is a serious uh, threat. And it has gone unrecognized and unnoticed and unchallenged for far too long. Uh, we, uh, as uh, vanguard uh, of uh, the working class, uh, need to be out front in a direct uh, exposure of this uh, anti-democratic fascist threat that, you know, we came so close to having Trump uh, be, uh, become president. It, 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 this is, uh, we, uh, I can't emphasize too much how important it was that Biden won. And we know he's not the answer, but he at least and his administration provides us a time frame for building a stronger movement. This is a time for the antithesis of the Trump regime to show its power. And it's there. It's there in America's working class. It just needs to be manifested. Okay, Dr. Scholl, uh, with those final uh, words, very um, summarizing words, we'd like to thank you uh, for sharing with us tonight. Uh, and we'd like to invite you to continue to participate 
uh, in this project, as we would like to invite everyone to help us uh, further this project. In order to uh, win, we have to uh, do more to understand what it is uh, we're up against and uh, uh, various uh, approaches that will help us uh, to influence our working class in the first place, but uh, our people in general toward a more democratic, uh, toward the, the protection, uh, expansion, and advancement of democracy. So I invite you all to send me a note at d at cpusa.org if you have any material we should look at or if you have a suggestion for a, a speaker that you can help us uh, bring uh, uh, to uh, um, participate in the exploration of this material. Thank you all for joining in uh, tonight and thank you uh, Dr. Scholl again. So thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. We have a job to do and uh, we uh, have the confidence that uh, uh, we can make uh, great steps forward. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.